Mega Evolutions are one of Pokemon's greatest gimmicks they have ever added into the games. In fact, it's been there in so many games, from its introduction in X and Y to Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon, and it even made its way onto the Nintendo Switch in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, and is now coming back in the upcoming newest game, Pokemon Legends Z8. By the way, I'm currently in Honolulu, Hawaii for the Pokemon Worlds 2024 Championships, and I currently have two Steeny codes for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet that we're gonna be hiding in this video. So make sure you're looking around during the video. These codes will be hidden somewhere. We'll definitely have a part two with new Mega Evolutions if they're announced, and we'll be giving away even more of these codes. Let's focus on the competition ahead, and I'll see you all again at the closing ceremonies on Sunday evening to share some special news for our Pokemon games. Now feel free to dust off any of your old games and bring them all out as I show you all the places where to gather these Pokemon. The games that I'll specifically be using are Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, Pokemon Go, and eventually gathered them all for Pokemon Home so I could send them over to Legend ZA whenever that game comes out. So sit back, relax, grab your Nintendo Switch, and let's get catching all the Mega Pokemon. That way you're prepared for the next game. Let's start off by going through the Pokemon in Generation 1 that have the Megas. Starting off with all these starters, we have Mega Venusaur, we have Mega Charizard X, which is the coolest one, Mega Charizard Y, and Mega Blastoise. Now it's interesting how to get these Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. Now some of these were done early on during events where you could have just caught them, or you could have caught them from previous games and transferred them over to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But if you're playing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, there's a couple things we need to do. You first need to complete the base game's main storyline, complete the entire DLC for the Teal Mask and its storyline, then speak to Serrano to start the Indigo Disc, then you're going to have to complete Blueberry Task, known as BBQs in the Indigo Disc, reach the BB League Club Room in the Indigo Disc story, and then finally, you'll be able to start donating BP to the Baseball Club, and by doing this, this will unlock the various starters in the game to start appearing in the wild in the whole entire terrarium inside of the Indigo Disc. So if there's no starters showing up in your Indigo Disc, that's pretty much what you have to do. Now the first one we'll be hunting is Bulbasaur, which eventually will evolve into Ivysaur and then Venusaur. Now the cool thing about Mega Venusaur, it has an ability called Thick Fat. And what Thick Fat does is reduce fire and ice attacks by 50%, making this an extremely tanky Mega Evolution that was used a lot in competitive play before. Now in order to find Bulbasaur, you're going to have to make your way over to the coastal biome around this location. And once you're here, you should be easily able to spot a Bulbasaur and then catch it. Once you get your Bulbasaur, simply just start evolving it into Ivysaur, then get Venusaur, and then what you can do is dump it into a box called Mega Evolutions, because that's where we'll just be putting all of them in this video. And that's where my Venusaur is going to go, because ooh, it's going to become Mega Venusaur. The next one that we're going to be hunting is going to be Charizard, because Charizard gets to become Mega Charizard X and Mega Charizard Y. Now, if you didn't know, Mega Charizard X is a fire dragon type. Now, Mega Charizard has the ability called Tough Claws, which increases uses the power of moves that make physical contact by 30%. When you think of Charizard X, you're going to really want a physical based Charizard. Now Mega Charizard Y is a fire flying type and it's going to have the ability called Drought. Basically the ability Drought is going to cause an intense sunshine which not only increases fire moves by 50% but it'll also let Mega Charizard Y be able to use solar beam without charging and the bonus is that it decreases all water moves by 50%. So if you're looking for a Mega Charizard why you're going to want to make sure that the Charmander you get is going to be strengthened in its special attack not its physical attack. Now in order to catch Charmander you just have to be in the savannah biome and it's pretty much right where you walk out where you start the indigo disc is where you'll be able to find a wild Charmander. Just make sure that you catch two Charmanders one specialized for physical and one specialized for special attack. Once you get those and evolve them into Charizard just send them right over to your mega evolution box. The next mega Pokemon is going to be Mega Blastoise and the ability that it has is called Mega Launcher which is going to increase the power of all aura and pulse moves by 50%. This is going to include a bunch of moves like aura sphere, dark pulse, dragon pulse, heal pulse, origin pulse, just a lot of fun stuff that you can do on it. Now to get a squirtle you're just going to have to head over to the canyon biome in this location about here and that's where you pretty much will find a squirtle, catch it, evolve it into war turtle, then blastoise and you should be set. Just make sure that it's specialized in special attack as all these pulse moves are going to be for special. And if for some reason 
and you don't have Scarlet or Violet, you can literally hunt these in Pokemon Sword and Shield in Raid Dens. You can hunt them in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl in the Grand Underground. And if you have Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee, they're just wild spawns in the game. The next two Mega Pokemon are not actually found in Scarlet and Violet. They aren't found in Pokemon Sword or Shield, but they are found in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, as well as Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And those two Pokemon are Mega Beedrill and Mega Pidgeot. Personally, I'd rather just hunt these two Pokemon in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee because they're just right there at the start of the game in Viridian Forest. Now, Mega Beedrill is really interesting because it has the ability called Adaptability. Now, normally when a Pokemon uses the same move as its type, it does a multiplier of about 1.5. However, with Adaptability and using a stab move, it's going to increase from 1.5 to 2. Your bug moves and poison moves would deal a lot more damage. When you walk into Viridian Forest, you'll get a chance of encountering it. Sometimes you get Butterfree showing up and other times you just get a Beedrill that shows up right there. Now Mega Pidgeot is really cool because it has an ability called No Guard. And with this ability, all moves used by this Pokemon cannot miss at all. So start planning in your head what moves you can possibly use with the Mega Pidgeot. Now, Pidgeys are pretty much everywhere in this game, so all you have to do is catch one, evolve it into a Pidgeotto, and then into a Pidgeot, and just like that, you're going to have your Mega Pidgeot ready to go. The next Mega is going to be Mega Alakazam. Now, Mega Alakazam has an ability known as Trace, and basically what Trace does is just copy the opponent's ability and puts it on itself. But one thing that you should know about Mega Alakazam is that it has the fifth highest special attack out of every single Pokemon that has come out up until this point sitting at a whopping 175 special attacks so it's going to do a lot of damage to essentially catch an alakazam all you have to do is enter into the obsidian field lands and make your way over to the location known as sand gem flats right over here is where you'll find a wild alpha alakazam and when you're further in the game you'll get a lot more stronger balls that you can just use and i was able to catch it in just one shot just like this so i think having a mega alpha pokemon is very unique that's why i'm going for alakazam in this game and the benefit of Pokemon Legends Arceus is that you don't have to trade with anyone. Even if you have a Kadabra, there's an evolution item that you could put right onto it. It's a link cable item. Everything is self-service in this game. If you ever have Pokemon that have to be traded to be evolved, forget that. Just send them over to this game and evolve it right over here. Now, the next two Pokemon are going to be in the exact same area in Scarlet and Violet, and that's going to be Lake Casaroya, aka the most laggiest place in the base game of Scarlet and Violet. And the two Megas that we'll be hunting down here is going to be Mega Gyarados and Mega Slowbro. Now, Mega Slowbro almost looks like it's getting eaten alive and has the ability called Shell Armor. Now, what Shell Armor does is prevent any Pokemon from receiving a critical hit and this works even against moves that almost guarantee critical hits and right inside of lake casaroya is where you'll find a bunch of slow pokes floating around a slow bro so slow bro is going to be right there and there's also a terrestrialized slow bro that you'll find in lake casaroya so you can pick and choose which one you'd want to get now mega gyarados is really interesting instead of maintaining the water flying and becoming a water dragon which hopefully they change in pokemon legend za it becomes a water dark Pokemon. Really weird. And it has the ability called Mold Breaker. Essentially, when a Pokemon uses a move while having the ability Mold Breaker, it's basically going to ignore the other Pokemon's abilities. For example, if a Pokemon with Mold Breaker uses Earthquake, it can actually hit the opposing Pokemon that is using Levitate. So it's pretty cool stuff. And of course, there's a bunch of Gyarados roaming all around Casaroya. So just go ahead, grab one and just simply add it right into your Mega Evolution box. The next Mega Evolution is going to be Mega Gengar, and I'm going to be honest, the shiny version of this Mega is by far my favorite because it's just this pure white, menacing, chaotic ghost that shows up, and I just wish the real shiny was the exact same color white as its Mega Evolution. But all that aside, Mega Gengar is a great Mega Evolution, and it also has the ability known as Shadow Tag, and what Shadow Tag does is prevent any Pokemon from essentially being able to switch out of battle while it's out on the field. Now, now in Scarlet and Violet, getting a Gengar without having to trade is a little bit difficult, but luckily if you played the base game already in Scarlet and Violet, you'll find an NPC in Lavincia that does a trade, and if you do the trade with that NPC, you'll be getting a Haunter from them that'll evolve into a Gengar. That's one way of doing it. The other way is by finding wild mass outbreaks for this Gengar 
in the teal mask. It literally will spawn hordes of them in this specific location right over here if you happen to get a mass outbreak. So that's a very simple way of getting a Gengar in Scarlet and Violet. Now for the next three Pokemon that have Megas, Mega Kangaskhan, Mega Pinsir, and Mega Aerodactyl, I decided to return back to my Pokemon Sword game. Now if you're playing Pokemon Sword and Shield or you bring it, you're putting it back into your Switch for the first time after a very long time, make sure that you download the DLCs that you previously bought because if you don't, you're going to try to access the DLC or go to the guy at the train station and he's not going to let you go anywhere. So just do that from your eShop to have that available. You'll know the DLCs are working because you can fly to any location in the game. The Mega Kangaskhan is probably the most interesting Mega out of every single Pokemon because the baby in its pouch actually comes out, but that baby is not even a registered Pokemon till this day, which blows my mind and makes no sense. We should at least get a pre-evolution of what Kangaskhan is, especially with that baby out there. Now it has an ability called Parental Bond. Parental Bond is going to allow the Pokemon to basically attack twice. It's really annoying. The second attack will hit with 25% of the power, so in effect, it is equivalent to a 25 boost to all attack. And like I said, this is very annoying when you're battling against one, but you're going to be the one who owns one. So let me show you exactly how to get your Kangaskhan. In order to find one, you're going to have to be in the Isle of Armor DLC. And certain Pokemon spawn in different times or dates. Pokemon Sword and Shield was a very interesting game where you can skip certain dates in the game, which would cause different wild Pokemon spawns to show up at different times. Now for Kangaskhan, you just have to set the date to October 2nd, 2020. And when you do that and head over to the training lowlands, you'll have a Kangaskhan appear right in front of your eyes and you can go ahead and catch one. If you don't have the Pokemon Sword or Shield DLC, you can also catch one in the Great Marsh in BDSP, but it will depend on what day you're hunting for it to show up. Or you can catch one in the Rock Tunnel in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Now, if you thought Pinsir was already a very creepy Pokemon, Mega Pinsir is even creepier. It gets the dual type flying. And the ability it has is called Aerolate. And essentially what it's going to do is allow all normal type moves by the Pokemon to become flying type moves and they get a 20% power boost. That is incredibly broken. Now, the issue with Pinsir is that it's so version exclusive, it kind of hurts my head that they did this. Pinsir is going to be exactly in the same location of as Kangaskhan in the training lowlands, but it's going to be exclusive to Pokemon Sword. If you're trying to get one in the Grand Underground in BDSP, well, unfortunately, it's only going to be in Shining Pearl. And you think you could find it in both Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee? Nope, you only can get it in Let's Go Eevee. This is a very version exclusive Pokemon. Pokemon, so unfortunately you have to own at least one of those games to get yourself a pincer. Now the next Pokemon is going to be Mega Aerodactyl, which is awesome because it is a fossil Pokemon. And when it Mega evolves, it's going to get the ability Tough Claws. And Tough Claws is basically going to boost the power of contact moves by about 30%. The reason why I prefer hunting this in Pokemon Sword and Shield is because they're just wild spawns. You don't have to turn in any rock or any fossil. It's going to be located right over here on my map in the Crown Tundra. Just make sure to call it down or whistle because it's going to keep flying away unless it sees you or you call it over to you. Now Mewtwo is a very interesting Mega Pokemon. It actually has two forms, Mega Mewtwo X and Mega Mewtwo Y. And fun fact, Mega Mewtwo X has the highest attack in the entire game, while Mega Mewtwo Y has the highest special attack in the game. Mega Mewtwo X is a psychic fighting type and has the ability Steadfast. Every time that it flinches, it's going to increase the speed stat by one. Mega Mewtwo Y is just pure psychic and has the ability called Insomnia, which is pretty much going to prevent this Mewtwo from falling asleep in battle. Mewtwo is still absolutely broken, especially in its Mega Form. And to get both of these, you're going to need two Mewtwo's. Now, don't worry, Mewtwo is pretty much going to be everywhere on the Nintendo Switch for you to get. At the end of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, you can catch a Mewtwo. If you played Brilliant Diamond or Shiny, Pearl and have accessed the end game Ramana's Park, you can also get a Mewtwo over there. And the best part about Ramana's Park is that you can actually shiny hunt the Mewtwo there and get it to be green. Very cool. You can also do this in Dynamax Adventures, which is going to be in the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC, where you just basically hunt RNG until you get a shiny Dynamax raid. 
and in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you can't catch one in the wild, but Pokemon did do an event in August 2023. It was where you battle Mewtwo and essentially you defeat it and you can catch it. That's really it. That's how you get Mewtwo and Scarlet and Violet, but they're all over the place. And of course, if you play Pokemon Go, that's another way of you getting Mewtwo. So there's plenty of ways to get all these Mewtwo's and that's how you'll be able to have both Mewtwo's for the X form and the Y form. If you do enjoy these kinds of videos, hitting that like button and subscribe button helps me know that you want more videos just like this. Now let's move on to all the Mega Evolutions in Generation 2. The first Pokemon we'll start off with in Gen 2 is Mega Houndoom, which retains its Dark Fire typing and has the ability called Solar Power. Now what Solar Power does is increases the Pokemon special attack by 1.5 during harsh sunlight. However, the big issue is that the Pokemon will lose 1 8th of its maximum HP at the end of each turn. Just want to keep in mind that your Houndoom can destroy itself during this. But Mega Houndoom looks incredible with its horns and just the bones on its chest growing out it's very cool now there's two ways you can get one in scarlet and violet one way is just by going in the inlet grotto at the start of the game there's so many hound doors in here that you can just catch one and simply evolve it or you can actually find a wild spawn of a houndoom just chilling right over here on the map in this specific location if you go here it just shows up it's an interesting rare spawn but that's how you get the houndoom next up on the the list is Mega Ampharos, which by the way is extremely cool because Mega Ampharos gains the dragon type, but not Gyarados, right? They gave it to Mega Ampharos. Anyway, its glorious mane starts to grow out of its hair, its tail becomes extremely fluffy, and it has the ability Mode Breaker. Now, Ampharos actually spawn just right in the wild in Scarlet and Violet, and all you have to do is head over to these locations on your map. I went over all the way to the top right portion of the map, and they were just walking around there, and that's where I decided to catch mine. And that's how you get your Ampharos. The next Mega we'll be focusing on is Mega Heracross, which maintains its bug fighting typing and gets the ability called Skill Link. Now, Skill Link is really special because what it does is enable multi-strike moves to always strike five times and this is really annoying but however if you have a heracross that's doing it it's fantastic it's a great way to annoy anyone you're fighting in battle with or simply to destroy any pokemon you're coming across by using this ability on your mega heracross and heracross is very accessible and if you want a very easy spot to get heracross you can just head all the way up north to the Sokarat trail where you're gonna find a bunch just hanging out you just stand there and a heracross is going to run right up to you and that's simply how you get a Heracross that you can use later on to Mega. Next up is Mega Tyranitar, and Mega Tyranitar looks incredibly cool. I don't understand how its bluish pattern on its chest or belly starts turning into a red color, but it, it, it just does that, and it's really interesting, but it's a very cool Mega Evolution. And its Mega ability is going to be Sandstream. The ability Sandstream is basically just going to cause a Sandstorm that is going to just chip away damage on the opposing Pokemon while your Pokemon is totally fine or unless the opponent has a pokemon resistant to the sandstorm now tyranitar is a difficult pokemon to get depending on what version of the game you have it's exclusive to pokemon scarlet pokemon brilliant diamond and exclusive to pokemon shield so if you have any of those other games you're out of luck to get a tyranitar luckily we have a discord where you can trade version exclusive pokemon you can go over to that and request one if you don't have one now to get tyranitar all you have to do is just fast travel to the secluded beach and then head all the way up to this location where you'll find a bunch of larvitar just running around the entire area just go ahead catch one evolve it into the pupitar and then eventually evolve it into tyranitar and that's how you're going to add one to your mega collection next up is going to be mega scissor who is also a very good looking mega pokemon that's going to have the ability technician technician's a really cool ability because it's going to increase the power of moves which have a power of 60 or less by 50 percent so it gives a lot of lower powered moves some viability when it comes to battle now typically you would have to catch a scyther in the base game of pokemon scarlet and violet which 
actually located by the Lake Castle Roya area and evolve it with a metal coat into scissor. However, in Pokemon Indigo Disc DLC, you can literally find wild Caesars just running around in the wild. In the canyon biome, there's just a ton around the area and you'll sometimes bump into one or two in the savannah biome. So scissors are very accessible in the Indigo Disc DLC. So just simply grab one and throw it onto your team. That way you can mega evolve it in the next game. The final Pokemon of Gen 2 is going to be Mega Steelix. Just look how terrifying Mega Steelix is. It has the ability Sand Force. So during any sandstorms, it's going to increase the power of any rock, ground, or steel type moves used by the Pokemon by 30%. So Steelix will be able to definitely deal a lot of damage with a lot of stab based steel type and ground type moves. Onyx or Steelix is not at all in Pokemon Scarlet or Violet. So the best way to get this is by going to the previous game, Pokemon Legends Arceus, by simply heading to the Coronet Highlands specifically in this location. Once you arrive here, you'll find a menacing Alpha Steelix ready to be caught. Now, if you don't see an Alpha Steelix here for some reason, it's only because there are massive mass outbreaks that affect the spawns of Alpha Pokemon. So just reset the area until you don't see massive mass outbreaks and the Steelix should spawn for you. Now let's talk about all the Pokemon from Generation 3 that have Mega Evolutions that you can get. And we'll start off with the first three, which are starters Mega Sceptile, Mega Swampert, and Mega Blade. Blaziken. Mega Sceptile is also one of my favorite Megas because it gains the dragon typing, making it a grass dragon. Mega Sceptile's ability is Lightning Rod, which is going to allow it to absorb electric type moves, which will in turn raise its special attack while nullifying the move. So it's a very interesting ability and plays a big role when you're in battles and what type matchup is with your opponent. Also, let's not forget dragon typing. And why doesn't Gyarados have the dragon typing? It doesn't make sense. Ampharos, now Sceptile, what's next? Now, in order to get a Mega Sceptile, we're going to have to capture its pre-evolution, Trico, which is going to be located in the canyon biome right over here in this area. Once you get it, you're simply just going to evolve it all the way until it becomes a Sceptile, and you'll have this Pokemon ready to go when Mega Evolutions are available. Next up is Mega Swampert, which is just an extreme brawlic version of Swampert. Now Mega Swampert is going to have the ability Swift Swim which allows the Pokemon speed stat to be doubled during rain and in order to catch that you're gonna have to get a Mudkip and Mudkip can be found in the coastal biome area right in this location over here. Just catch one, evolve it the first time then evolve it the second time and you'll get yourself your Swampert. Now out of all three Hoenn starter Mega evolutions I think Mega Blaziken is probably the most broken one just because of how powerful its stats get and that it also has the ability speed boost i mean having speed boost on a powerful pokemon like that is incredible its speed is going to increase at the end of every turn by one stage making this an absolute beast to get and in the indigo disc they placed its pre-evolution torchic all the way in the polar biome in order to get this torchic you're gonna have to make your way over to this cave right about here in this location once you drop in you'll be able to just run up against the wall which will cause a bunch of spawns inside but eventually you'll get your torchic to show up now, while you're also in the polar biome, there is another Mega Evolution, and that's going to be Mega Metagross, which just like Mega Charizard X and Mega Aerodactyl, this is going to boost the power of contact moves by 30%. So just make sure that its attack stat is extremely high. Now, in the polar biome, you'll be able to find a bunch of Beldums, but also if you make your way over to this location in this cave, you'll be able to find its second stage evolution. And once you have its second stage and catch it all you have to do is just level it up a bit and you'll be able to evolve it into your metagross now the next mega is going to be mega gardevoir which gets the ability pixelate which will allow all normal moves to become fairy type moves and it receives a 30 percent power boost Sylveon is also another Pokemon that gets this during its hidden ability. Just wanted to point that out. Now, to get Gardevoir in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you can just head over to Lavencia. And when you're in Lavencia, you can go right over to this spot. All you have to do is simply just catch the Curlium, evolve it, 
and you'll get yourself your Gardevoir that'll eventually become Mega Gardevoir. Now, the next couple of Pokemon that you're going to have to get is going to all be around the area of Alfernada and by the Dali Zappa Passage, which is right close by in the mountaintop by it. The first one we're going to be talking about is Mega Medicham. Mega Medicham is really cool and it's almost like it unlocks the ultimate fighter form that it always had within it and it's just going to maintain one of its original abilities which is pure power. Now to get a Medicham it's really easy it's just going to have to be daytime around the Alphernada area you'll find Medicham spawn with a bunch of its pre-evolutions. Now Medicham can also be found in area zero it's everywhere in there or you can walk in Dali Zappa passage and you'll be able to find Medicham with its pre-evolutions there either way it doesn't matter that's where you'll be able to get one another pokemon that has a mega evolution that's going to be right outside alfernada but it's going to be nighttime when you catch this one is going to be Bennett. and mega Bennett absolutely is crazy when it mega evolves it gets the ability prankster which increases the priority of status moves so those are the things that you're going to want to add to mega Bennett. to catch a regular Bennett, it's just going to be at nighttime roaming around so simply just catch one and you don't have to evolve it and you're done. Now, if you go in the Dalla Zappa passage right from Alfernada, you'll probably bump right into the next Pokemon that we're going to be talking about, which is Mega Sableye. Mega Sableye actually looks really cool holding its giant jewel and it gets the ability Magic Bounce which is going to be great for reflecting certain status moves right back at the attacker. So if they try to poison you, it goes right back to them. Burn you, it goes right back to them. It's great stuff. And that's pretty much it on how to get your Sableye. The next Pokemon I'm going to be talking about is also going to be in Dali Zappa Passage, but it's going to be very exclusive to Pokemon Violet, specific to the Crown Tundra in Pokemon Sword, and it is a Shining Pearl exclusive. And that Mega that we're talking about is going to be Mega Salamance, which is a dragon flying type doesn't get anything changed and its ability is going to be aerolate which causes all normal type moves to become flying type moves and receive a 30 percent power boost if you go down the passageway you'll find its pre-evolution shogun just roaming around that spot you just catch the shogun level it up a bit and then eventually you'll get yourself a salamance also wanted to point out that the mega salamance resembles the paradox version of it which is roaring moon so it's going to be interesting interesting to see what happens when Megas come back, but we also have Paradox Pokemon, which are kind of a shout out to Pokemon having a Mega Evolution. Let me know what you think about that. Next up is Mega Camera, which by the way, if you happen to get a shiny, looks absolutely amazing. I mean, I think black colored shiny Pokemon are probably the best looking ones. Maybe that's an overrated take, but that's just my opinion. Mega Camera Up is going to just have a giant single volcano on its back, and the ability that it has is Sheer Force. Sheer Force is basically going to raise the base power of all damaging moves that have any additional effects by about 30%. However, the additional effects are going to be ignored for the moves. So there's a little trade-off there. You can find Camera Up located over here on the map roaming in the wild, or you can just simply find it roaming about in Area 0. Next on our Mega list is going to be Mega Altaria, which is really cool because the clouds just completely expand on the Pokemon, and it loses its flying type and replaces that with the fairy type. And it becomes a dragon fairy, which I think is really cool when it comes to typings. And it gains the ability Pixelate, just like Gardevoir. It's cool to see normal moves get repurposed in other typings because of certain abilities. Now to find an Altaria, all you have to do is just head over to the Casaroya Laggy Lake area and you'll be able to look around and just find Altarias flying around with some Swablus nearby. But this is a great spot to catch them. There's tons of them in this area on the land masses. Next up is going to be Glalie when it mega evolves into Mega Glalie. This thing looks crazy and it has the ability called Refrigerate which causes all normal type moves by the Pokemon to become ice type moves and get a 30% power boost which you can find on the Glaciato Mountain but you could also just grab a snow runt which tons of them are roaming around catch that and then just evolve it so it's going to be located around this area on Glaciato Mountain that's where you'll be able to get one now for these next five Pokemon we're going to be heading back into Pokemon Sword and Shield in order to get these let's talk about Mega Manetric Mega Manetric just looks like a more insane version of the base Minitrick and it's going to have the ability Intimidate which simply is just going to lower the attack of the opponent's Pokemon. So for Minitrick what you want to do is set your Nintendo Switch date to 
8-18-2020. And when you do that, it'll cause thunderstorms to happen in the wild area. So to catch this Pokemon is head over to the rolling fields. It's basically where you enter the wild area for the first time and follow this pathway towards the left as soon as you exit out. And then you see a Manetric just spawn in the wild right there. Or you can go on Route 4 and catch its pre-evolutions that spawn in this area and then evolve it later on to be a Manetric. The next mega evolution is going to be Mega Mawile. Now, to even catch a Mawile, it's going to be very version exclusive. So you can get it by playing Brilliant Diamond or by playing Pokemon Sword. So if you have Sword, you're in luck. And Sword is the superior version anyway. Sorry, Shield players. Now, Mega Mawile is a Steel Fairy type, retains the same typing, and is going to have the ability called Huge Power, which is basically going to double the attack stat. And to get this Pokemon in the wild, you're going to have to set your switch to 820 2020 as the date. And then all you have to do is head over to this location in the wild area, aka the Dusty Bowl, and you'll be able to find them there. Now, they're really small, so it's hard to see them roam around, but when you enter this area, they'll just run up to you and the battle initiate and you'll be able to catch yourself a Mawile. Now the next Pokemon is Mega Sharpedo and if you don't have Pokemon Sword or Shield, everything basically from Generation 4 and down can be caught in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl in the Overworld or in the Grand Underground, but I really enjoy hunting some Pokemon back in the previous generation. And Mega Sharpedo is just an insane Pokemon and it's going to have the ability called Strong Jaw. Now what Strong Jaw does is going to increase the power of the Pokemon's body moves by 50% which really matches with the aggressiveness of a shark Pokemon so, so they did a great job with it. Now to catch a Sharpedo you have to head over to the Isle of Armor DLC and basically you go into any bodies of water and you have these sharks just charge at you and try to aggressively you whenever you are in the water so it actually won't be hard to even bump into one you walk in the water and it'll zoom on to you and that's how you bump into your sharpedo you catch it and you're done i do find it weird though that they added camera up to pokemon scarlet and violet but they never added sharpedo weird choice i don't know why they did that next up is going to be mega agron and something interesting about mega agron is that it actually loses its rock typing to become a mono steel type now mega agron's ability is filter and what it does is reduce damage from super effective moves by 25 percent so instead of two times damage being done to it on a super effective move it's going to have 1.5 damage done to it so it's pretty much a tanky pokemon now to grab yourself an agron you want to make your way over to the crown tundra and specifically you want to head over to the lakeside cave right in here is where a agron will spawn and you can just catch it and you don't have to bother with catching its pre-evolutions just catch the agron right here and you're done another pokemon that's going to be located in the crown tundra is going to be absol now mega absol gains wings and is able to fly it retains the dark typing as its previous form and it has the ability magic bounce all status effect moves basically just bounce right off and go back to the Pokemon that used it on them. Now, Absol is going to be date specific. So what you want to do is set the date to 11 6 2020 and then what you're going to do is make your way to this exact location in the crown tundra and over here is where you'll be able to catch your absol now there are also a couple of legendary pokemon in generation 3 that get mega evolutions this includes latios latias Rayquaza and two interesting ones that are not technically mega evolutions but it's the exact same mechanic but it's called primal reversion and it's going to be Kyogre and Groudon. Essentially, if you're playing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you're going to be able to catch his Pokemon in the Indigo Disc in the post game, but it's really complicated because you need to go online in the Indigo Disc and do a bunch of BBQ quests with other players. And what will happen is as you rack up the BBQ quest, eventually you're going to get a quest, a BBQ quest that is yellow. It's going to be a whole entire group quest, like finding a Ditto block or finding a clue to a certain Pokemon or using a hint towards a certain Pokemon. And once you do that, you'll then be able to talk to a guy in the post game after you complete the entire indigo disc main story named snacksworth and when you talk to snacksworth he'll then give you a random snack for a random legendary pokemon so you're not even guaranteed to get rayquaza latios or latias 
right away. But whenever you do, you'll be able to start to catch them in their various locations. This is the location where I found Latios in the main area of Paudea. This is where I found Latios located here on the map. You can find Rayquaza in the great center of Paudea. And these are the locations for Kyogre and Groudon. But honestly, because all these legendaries are shiny locked in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, it's not going to be as exciting hunting them here. Unless you don't care about the shinies, then just hunt them in this game. But hunting them in brilliant diamond and shining pearl in ramana's park is a fantastic place to get all these legendary pokemon because none of them are shiny locked and they're all open to hunt so definitely pick them up there if you're aiming for a shiny version of these legendaries or you can do pokemon sword and shield the dynamax adventures but it's a lot more annoying to get to the legendary pokemon to get it to be shiny because you have to go through this entire pathway until the end so personally ramana's park probably the best place to go and if you don't have brilliant diamond and shining pearl then you can just stick with the scarlet and violet indigo disc way of hunting mega latios and latias don't really get anything crazy they just have the ability levitate which is what their non-mega forms have rayquaza's ability is delta stream which is its own unique weather condition that causes strong winds and it allows moves that would be super effective against pure flying pokemon to instead deal neutral damage to all flying pokemon which means electric ice and rock moves deal neutral damage to flying type pokemon now let's move on to the generation 4 mega evolutions and we'll start this one off with mega garchomp the ability that it gets is sand force and what sand force does is increase the power of rock ground and steel type moves used by the pokemon with this ability by 30 percent and the best part is any pokemon with this ability will take no damage from the sandstorm now the really cool thing about scarlet and violet is that guard chomps are actually just flying around by the pokemon league area so if you go to your map open it up and go right about this spot you'll see a flying guard chomp on here i didn't even know this was possible until i unlocked the ability to climb up walls in the game and then i saw that i was like whoa this is crazy so this is where you can catch a guard chomp once it finally spots you and is able to come down i'm curious how many people caught a guard chomp like this in the game next up on the list is mega obama snow and its ability is going to be snow warning which causes a hail storm and now in in order to find an Obama snow, all you have to do is just head up over to the Glaciado Mountains over by this specific area. You'll see families of its pre-evolution along with Obama snows standing in the middle and it's pretty easy to get right over here. Now the next two Pokemon that we're going for that have mega evolutions are going to be Lucario and Galate. And in the Teal Mask DLC, both of these Pokemon are actually located in the exact same spot. So if you open up your map in the Teal Mask and head over to this exact spot over here this is where you'll see them now let's talk about mega lucario if my memory is correct it's one of the first mega pokemon we see in action in x and y and its ability adaptability basically will increase the stab of the pokemon which means it's going to do a lot of damage glade which we said is also here and it's really cool because it's like a knight just holding a sword i think mega glade is also one of the coolest ones and it's going to have inner focus which will prevent the pokemon from flinching now the next mega pokemon that we're going to be talking about is Mega Lopunny. And the best part about Mega Lopunny is that it gains the fighting typing in its mega form and it gains the ability scrappy which basically will allow this pokemon to do damage and hit ghost type pokemon so normal and fighting moves can now make contact with those ghost pokemon now to catch this pokemon we're going to take a trip down to pokemon legends arceus this pokemon is also going to be located in the obsidian field lands pretty much all the way down south located in this area so when you go over to this spot this is where you'll find an alpha low punny so another alpha pokemon that has a mega that you can add to your collection i think it's gonna be so cool to bring alpha pokemon into pokemon legend za that can go into mega evolution form that's gonna be really awesome and that wraps it up for gen 4 now let's move on to gen 5 now there's only one mega evolution for generation 5 and that's going to be mega aldino which actually gains the fairy typing and has the ability healer which at the end of each turn healer is going to allow you to cure an adjacent ally status condition so i guess it's a great pokemon to have in a doubles battle to avoid status effects Anyway, in order to get Aldino, you're going to have to boot up Pokemon, Sword or Shield, and head to the Crown Tundra. Once you're in the Crown Tundra, you're going to want to make your way towards
towards this specific location right over here and that's where the Audino will show up and you can go ahead and catch it and that ends it for Gen 5. Now let's talk about the only Pokemon right now that has a Mega Evolution in Generation 6. Hopefully once we get a new Legend ZA trailer or information we'll have a lot more Gen 6 Mega Evolutions. But the Mega Evolution that I wanted to talk to you about was Diancy and there's no way to get Diancy in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, Pokemon Legends Arceus, or Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. It's literally non-existent. However, we do have Pokemon Go where we can actually get it. In fact, there is an event called Glitz and Glam. So if you make a Pokemon Go account, please, you should definitely make one because it's specifically going to be used for this Pokemon. I feel that Pokemon Go is so underused because whatever you catch in the real world, you can transfer into Pokemon Home and put it into your storage. I've been seriously able to get a lot of Pokemon into Pokemon Home due to Pokemon Go. Don't underestimate it. And I'm going to have on the screen all the tasks that you have to do for the Glitz and glam event once you complete all the objectives of this event you'll then be able to encounter a diancy and be able to catch it and once you get it if you link your pokemon home to your pokemon go you can send it over to pokemon home and it could be safely stored in there then there's literally no other way to get it if we're not including being able to transfer from 3ds because i know there are a lot of new pokemon players and not everyone had a 3ds so that's why i wanted to keep this video very switch specific now that you know where to catch all your mega evolution pokemon you should check out this video over here.